everyone. I'm just gonna chat with you a minute while uh, Facebook reaches out to tell people that our live has started. We are here to chat opera. Uh, we know that things are stressful out there in the world. I mean, bless you if you're dealing with illness or someone who's ill and even if you're not, you're dealing with isolation and stress and people are home who aren't home or people are home on top of you, even if you're used to being home. So we've all got things and so, you know, for lack of any other ideas, we've been asking people to turn to opera as a musical relief from what they've got going on. And luckily the Met Opera has been good enough to provide us all with a fresh opera each evening to watch. And what we did is uh, every week they put out the next week's schedule and we make a category that has any jewelry or scarves that have to do with the operas that are going on this week. And then on Monday, we take all those out and we put in the new batch for the operas that will be presented that week. So the items in that sort of revolving category are 19% off. It just so happens that this week, many of the operas they chose are also in our clearance category. So those are 40% off. So it's good opportunity. I know, you know, buying things may be the last thing on your mind. We do have, you know, life's still kind of revolving around us. We've got birthdays, we've got sort of weird graduations that are not happening, but yet people are still having a milestone in some way. And we've got Mother's Day, so we've got ideas for you basically. And a portion of all our sales for the month will go to help them at opera, because obviously they're having a really hard time. All the arts industry is uh, amongst many. So I'm going to show you the jewelry and scarf we have to represent this week's operas. Maybe you can let me know in the comments if you got a chance to see any of them. I'm sorry about the bright sunshine behind me because I can't close that door yet because we're waiting for the mail. <laughs> so Andrew's going to come and he'll take care of that when he's done at the meeting he's in. So like I said, I cover all the things. Items in the weekly category are discounted. 19% for regular priced items, 40% for clearance items. Donating a portion to the mat to help them. We can ship things directly to your recipient. So we can put a little card inside with a message from you. You can just put that in the notes when you're placing your order. And everything is sanitized before it leaves, before it goes in the box, basically. And uh, then we label it sanitized jewelry so that when your recipient gets it, they're not like afraid to open it, wear it and all that. So we can do, yeah, we can send to you, we can send to your recipient. If you've got someone to send a gift to, no problem. And I say we, I mean, basically me and Andrew. <laughs> so if, it's, if there's a lot, we call in Ava, but um, generally it's just the two of us right now. So Ava's coming at some point to pick up some kits today because we are still making product and keeping up with things because we're very sure we're going to come out of this and be back to normal. So, okay, let's start. Did anybody see Aida on Monday? Monday was the first opera of the week. They started it like on a, I don't know, however it goes. The week for them goes Monday to Sunday. So started out with Aida, and um, the last time they're going to be, last time, we'll see, presenting the um, former production of Aida with the horses and the big temple and all that. The new production, if you go onto the Met website and look at um, next season and click Aida, which is like the first one on the list, you can see a little... Um, video about what the new production of Aida will look like. All right, so for those who are new, I'm just gonna show how a bracelet tells a story through the Aida bracelet. This is the full, what we call the full story bracelet. So the story begins on one end of our bracelet. The pyramid represents our setting of ancient Egypt. We come along and this is Radame, what did I say, Radames. You know, they call his name Radames. <laughs> okay. 
So he is a sort of brownish bead with gold speckles because he is the golden boy and that is a heart and the pink crystal is Aida. So that is representing Celeste Aida. And then this sort of turbulent swirly heart represents her torn emotions between the um, position she has as a princess of Ethiopia and the love she has for Radames, the champion of her enemy. Then the other kind of pink crystal, that's what we call a bicone, it's Amneris, and she is jealous. So we have a green heart for her jealousy. And the story rolls on, and this all these gold beads are the triumph of Egypt over Ethiopia. And the little elephant charm represents the ancient, well, not ancient, but, you know, early, earlier 20th century versions of this opera that included elephants on stage. And then we go along. This is the king of Egypt. It's a pharaoh's head. Let's see if I can get closer so you can see the elephant and the pharaoh head. Okay, and as you know, this is a crushed, sort of a crushed glass bead to represent the crushing of Radame's hopes to marry Aida after the king so generously offers his daughter as a bride. <laughs> so we go along and it's, it's a nighttime on the Nile. The blue beads are the Nile and then the moon here. And Amneris is having a vigil for her wedding. So this is a Ankh charm to represent her prayers. We go along, we've got Aida, and this large bead is her big aria, O Patria Mia, talking about the green hills and blue skies of her homeland. So we go along and all heck breaks loose, as you know. This is a black bead here represents uh, Radames realizing that he has divulged secrets to the enemy, not intentionally. And as we go along, Amneris tries to save him, she fails, and the two lovers, Radames and Aida, are united in love and death. And Amneris prays to the goddess Isis to open heaven for them. So that gives you an idea of how a full story bracelet works in telling the story. I'm not going to do this for all of them because I feel like I talk too long and get too involved. <laughs> as an artist that happens so if you want i'm going to show them and i will show some highlighted um charms but if you want to see details of how each bead tells a story or each charm represents a part of the story you can just like i said hit the link in our um comment what is it the description and then that'll take you to the special category where you'll see the bracelet you're interested in you click on the bracelet it'll give you a big chart of how every what every bead stands for all right, so we're still on Aida. We have what is also called an inspired by bracelet, which just represents parts of the opera. It's just like a sort of a, a less heavy bracelet for people who don't like something as large as the full stories are. So the colors were chosen to represent Egyptian art, sort of you know, parchment and sort of yellowish sandy colored stone with like punctuated bright colors like red, blue, green, black. So it's representing what we think of when we think of Egyptian art. And then our charms are, again, the setting of ancient Egypt with a pyramid charm, a lotus flower charm, because lotus is symbolic of life and eternity in Egyptian mythology, and the Isis charm to represent Amneris' final prayers. So that is the inspired by bracelet for Aida. Again, those are 19% off. If you head to the link, you, you'll see all of, all of what's available. These are the Aida earrings. This one wants to keep going backwards on me. There we go. So again, we have the similar charms and these, these hoops have like an engraved design on them that makes me feel like ancient times. And I give you the ruler so you can see how long they are. All right, so that is Aida. Tuesday night, it's my, like I always say it's my favorite, right? <laughs> so I have like a hundred favorites. So one of my favorites is the uh, Fanchula del West. And I hope you got to see it because Marcello Giordani was amazing. Oh, thank you, Leslie and Juliana, for being there. I see you there. I appreciate it. Andrew usually reads the comments for me because I have a hard time demonstrating and keeping track. 
but he's in a meeting, so we're on our own. I hope he gets here before the mail comes. That's all I can say because I can't do this and run for the mail because we can't put the Easter cards out because it's like gale force winds. <laughs> so, too much information. Okay, so Girl of the Golden West, one of my favorites, so romantic. So, I'm like I said, I'm not going to go through every bead here. I'm just going to show you some highlights. We've got uh, Sheriff Hi, Rand. everyone. Okay, so now I have to give instructions to Andrew. The Easter cards are not out because of the wind, so when you see her coming, can you hand them to her? Yes, dear. Thank you, dear. Three bags full, dear. Okay, family affair. Well, that's right. We're supposed to be having a sip and show, so don't forget to have a sip. It's a family affair. Grapefruit juice. <laughs> Never drink in Facebook it's Live. That's what I say. Affair. Okay. So, Sheriff Francis Star is one of the charms there. Let's see if we can get close. The angel wing represents the end of act one when he tells her she has the face of an angel and she just finds this to be the ultimate flattery. So this is like very magical for her. This is a charm of the state. Doesn't want to behave. Let's see if we can get in there. Julie, jo Julie joined us. State of California charm to represent the final aria. Here we have Minnie's cabin which is super cute. There are some playing cards for the scene where she plays to save Ramirez's life. And a snowflake represents the, let's see, we can see, oh yeah, we can see the snowflake well there. Represents the magical scene in the snow where they hit kiss for the first time. So uh, that is actually clearance item because as much as I love Girl the Golden West, it's not a top seller. So the, the Fanchula Del West bracelet and the Inspired by for Fanchula Del West will both be 40% off. So here is the Inspired by, which I call Minnie's Gamble. I find this to be one of my proudest pieces. <laughs> I think it represents very well this scene where she's playing cards to save his life. We've got... A star for Rance, the sheriff, a cowboy boot for Ramirez, Dick Johnson, whatever you want to call him, the handsome one. And <laughs> you've ever seen the Jonas Coffin version? That's pretty, yeah. And the heart with a hole in it represents Minnie, who only one man can fill the, the hole in her heart, even though every man wants her. So we have, let's see if we can see here playing cards bead and then this droplet bead because you remember the scene where the blood drops out of the ceiling and Rance realizes Ramirez is there so I felt like this really represented that scene where she plays cards to win his life and cheats you know if you watch act one cheating is a bad thing so that is the minis gamble bracelet and again, 40% off anything Fanchula Del West. Wednesday, was that like last night? Yeah, Falstaff. Falstaff was fun. If you need to pick me up, you still have till 6.30 to catch some Falstaff. There's only an inspired by style bracelet for Falstaff. And it's all grape colors, sort of reds, purples, golds, to represent the different kinds of wine because Falstaff loves wine and can't get enough over here let's see i want to set this so you can see it properly bracelets never want to cooperate i think i'm gonna have to use my fingers to show you okay there we go you see there's grape glass grapes to represent wine again and there's little leaves grape leaves this is a love letter to represent Falstaff sending a love letter, a uh, identical love letter, to two different ladies, which is where it all goes wrong for Falstaff. He should have known better, and they decide to get back at him. And this oak leaf represents the final scene at the famous Hearn's Oak in Windsor Park, which has since fallen down. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to blow the illusion, but it's gone. No, don't, don't bother booking a trip. Um, tonight, Parsifal. 
which takes the culmination of Parsifal takes place on Good Friday. So that is why they have so graciously scheduled it so that we can watch part of it tonight and the rest on Good Friday because it's long. So we need time. Full story. This is again clearance items. So definitely check the link in the description, which will take you to the category and show you which are clearance and which are regular price. The regular price are still 20 19% off. I'm just settling it so that the charms will show nicely for you. Doesn't ever want to behave for me. Just want to get the knight's head showing. Okay, so the story of Parsifal is the story of the quest for the Holy Grail. So we've got chalice goblet for the holy grail we've got a knight's head because parsifal is a knight oh that one's it's flipping backwards but there it is get close on the knight head then we have see this is why i tell people to go and like click on the actual bracelet to see how the charms tell the story because it is a, a long demo over here we have a little fish for the Fisher King. And we have the Grail Castle. I'm not supposed to. The Grail Castle. And there is a swan because if you've seen Parsifal, it all starts when he shoots down a swan and they consider it to be a bad omen. So Head to the special category link, hit Parsifal, and you will see the chart come up in the photos, which will explain to you how the story is told through the different charms. There is an inspired by Parsifal also. Get it looking nice for you. Get the charms lean in the correct direction. There we go. So this is all mainly clear beads to represent Parsifal's innocence. He is the innocent fool, as they call him, and this is the innocent fool bracelet. So he ends up being a knight for a very roundabout ma matter. Here is the Holy Grail again. And in um, ancient medieval literature, the dove is the symbol of the Grail Knights. So the touches of red represent that Parsifal is, in fact, the Red Knight. It's uh, not always presented that way in the opera because, you know, Wagner has his own ideas, but he is the Red Knight in Holy Grail mythology. So that is tonight going into tomorrow. Tomorrow night, they will present for us Romeo and Juliet, Vittorio Grigolo, Diana Damarau. There is an intense chemistry between these two. It's worth watching. So Romeo and Juliet is one of my favorite things, period. Ballet, Shakespeare, opera. I saw that movie, like I couldn't count how many times I saw that movie when I was 14 years old. It was on HBO. I saw everyone. So it was a pleasure to make a Romeo and Juliet bracelet. Let me see how well I can... Um, there's like one particular part that's nice on here. Well, they're all beautiful, but this was very meaningful. Just to give you an idea of how I like to tell the story. Where's my pointer? So here we have a bead with a heart and a rose embossed on it. So a, a rose by any other name will smell as sweet. So this really represents when they meet and it's the balcony scene. Then we have the sun, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. So we've got a lot of other terms on here. We have a dagger, we all know where that's going. Let's turn it around, we're kind of going backwards. The um, pen and ink, you know, a, a message is supposed to come through to tell Romeo that Juliet is not really dead, and that doesn't really happen. We have a sword for the duel between Tybalt and Romeo. 
coordination is not my strong point. So, each, like I said, each bead tells a part of the story, represents a different character. So check out those charts if you really want to, if you have a particular opera you're interested in, to see how the story is told. So at the end here, we're going to um, go over next week's schedule. So if you want to hang in for that. Like I was saying, a lot of people have occasions coming up, despite the fact that the world's kind of gone crazy here. So we can send things as gifts directly to your recipient. All jewelry is sanitized before it goes in the box. And uh, we can put a card into the box for you. If you want it gift wrapped, I can probably do that too. So just let us know. We're happy to help. Um, if you might have anniversaries, birthdays, graduation, such as it is, Mother's Day. So right now, these are all discounted and a portion is going to go to help the Met Opera. The smaller inspired by bracelet for Romeo and Juliet is called Star-Crossed. So it's red for reasons of love and blood. I almost called this Oh Happy Dagger, but Andrew said that was not good. <laughs> So, we have a swirly star to represent the star-crossed lovers, a heart to represent love, and a dagger to represent where it's all sadly going. So, it has been popular. The nice thing about Romeo and Juliet is it just really crosses all genres. Actually, was inspired to make the bracelet after seeing the ballet. So, ballet, Shakespeare lover, book lover, it's it crosses all the all the levels. Saturday evening, they will give us the Anna Netrebko, Matthew Polanzani, and Marius Kuichen version of Don Pasquale. It's a do not miss. If things are getting you down right now, because it's, I mean, there's just, it's affecting everybody in ways that nobody can predict right now. You know, you think you're doing okay, and then you hear a bad newscast or something, and you need a pick-me-up. Don Pasquale with Anna Trebko is your thing because she is amazing and hilarious as Norina. I just, she's great at it. I mean, the change from the little, what is she, a Catholic schoolgirl, innocent, virginal nun girl, to um, crazy, raving harpy is amazing. So. If you're going to make room for something this weekend, because, you know, normally we'd, of course, be preparing for Easter holidays, but you know, right now that's all very different. So if you have some time, Don Pasquale is a lot of fun. Let's see. It doesn't want to play nice with me. Okay. This little charm here. Right there. So hand holding a heart. What's it doing there? Let's just see if we can get it. Yes. She's like pinching a heart and it represents that first aria of Norina where she's talking about how she knows men, basically. She knows how to handle them. And we've got, let's see, we've got some love doves to represent their happy ending at last. We've got a marriage license for the let me get there. Marriage license for the fake wedding. Love note, because there's a problem with a note that Don Pasquale finds to you know, indicate that she's having an affair. And then we have this heart with flowers. Let's see, Let me tuck this up so we can see the heart with flowers better. I'm sorry, this is, these are hard to demo. That's why I always refer people back to the charts. So at the end, they uh, there's a big scene in a garden where they have a meeting, a love meeting, and a beautiful duet, and then they get caught. <laughs> but um, that's the um, flowered heart. And the little hand, if you've ever seen Don Pasquale, it's all fun and games until in a moment of passion, or you know, not, not love passion, anger, she slaps Don Pasquale. And the whole, like you can feel that slap go through the whole room because everything that was so funny and fun, all of a sudden you see how sort of serious it becomes for a moment there. So that's why I included that. 
And then the Inspired by for Don Pasquale is Norina. The Norina bracelet, it's all pretty bright colors, purples, pinks, greens. Because she's a very vibrant girl. So just to show her character, we have that hand pinching heart charm again to show that famous aria of hers. The scene in the garden with the heart flowers and the marriage license because after the fake marriage, of course, she gets to marry the boy she really loves. Spoilers. And we finish up the week with Kose Fan Tute. A hilarious romp set in Coney Island for reasons we do not know why. It has some of the same charms as Don Pasquale because it has similar themes of we have the hand and heart again because Despina is like educating these girls on how to you know deal with men. So that's the charm for her aria. Then at the end, despite all the craziness, these guys are still going to marry these girls. I mean, I kind of like how it ends before they get that far because I'm just not sure what's going to happen with that. So I definitely encourage you to look at the chart for this one because it was a challenge. I put this off for the longest time to figure out how to show the switch, basically, where these guys then are disguised and come in and each ends up with the wrong girl. And so I basically used colors to represent the two couples. One is blues, the other one is golds. So you can see when the wrong guy is with the wrong girl. And that's really where it all goes wrong in Cosi Fontute. If, because they have the scene. The scene where they decide which guy they're gonna go for during this uh, little escapade. If they had each picked their own guy then the whole thing at the end would have been like, oh, but she's still in her heart, somehow knew it was me, so she still loved me. The fact that they each picked the wrong guy is where it all goes wrong. So <laughs> that's where Cosi Fantute then becomes like really weird feeling. It's not just funny anymore. It's like, what is going on? It's just crazy. All right, and we do have a Cosi Fantute scarf, which I can show you. Again, everything in the category is 19% off until Monday morning when we switch it over to next week's. So this is a long scarf as opposed to some of the square scarves we showed last week. And let me come close to show you. The bright colors represent all the shenanigans going on in Cosi Fontute. And you should see the writing there with the musical score. So, it's really colorful. So now's a good chance to get that. And obviously scarves make great gifts too. So anything you need. Right now, like I said, you have until Monday morning-ish. Andrew turns it over on Monday morning. Yep. And all of these items will be removed. And then we will load up jewelry and scarves that represent next week's operas. All right, so let me go down my list, make sure I mentioned all the things. Take a sip. That's the first thing it says on my list. Okay, this week, just because of the type of operas they chose, we have a mixture of the regular discount, 19% off, and clearance items, which are 40% off. So if you just hit the link in our description, you'll see all the representative bracelets. And... Uh, we're going to go over the Met schedule for next week in a moment. We are donating a portion to them because they are providing us with all this opera every night. If there are other um, places you'd like to check out opera, may I suggest Opera on Video or Opera Vision. And Opera America, I check their home. I don't know how to tell you how to get to this page, but they have a page compiled of any opera companies in America that are providing online content right now, they have sort of like a one page uh, place where you can see all kinds of opera. 
will be changing over on Monday. We can send it as a gift directly to your recipient with card and gift wrap if you want. I have plenty of gift wrap, Don't no problem. And uh, we sanitize all the jewelry before we pack it. And the scarves are wrapped, pre-wrapped in plastic, so they're ready to go. And next week, take it away. Do you, do you have the paper, end with the next week's schedule on it? No, you don't. Here it is underneath something. <laughs> Just to get you excited, I'm, we'd also like to wish everyone a happy Passover, which I think we're in today, a happy Easter. As much as it, everything has kind of changed this year, I hope you will still enjoy. And on uh, Easter Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Andrea Bocelli is going to be having a special concert in one of the basilicas, which will be empty. The Domo in Florence. The Live. Domo in Florence. Live. A live concert at 1 p.m. Eastern. So you don't need me to help you get there. You just type in Andrea Bocelli Easter concert in your search bar and you will find it. So um, if Easter is not the same because you're not making dinner for 25 people or going to church or whatever, at least there's something special we can dip into. Monday, a new week begins on the Met schedule. Monday, Rusalka, 6.30 p.m. Well, you know, nobody seems to know the exact time it happens, but between 6.30 and 7.30, they post the new opera. It's Rusalka with Renee Fleming, Peter Buxala, so um, two great stars. And uh, that is the older production from the Met, not the current one. Tuesday, Boris Gudinov with Renee Papa. I missed that one, so I need to make sure that I catch it this time. Wednesday, Puccini La Rondine, which I believe means the swallow. And I saw this in the Summer Encore once, and it is quite romantic. It is Angela Giorgio and Roberto Alagna when they were together. And Thursday, I would say, is you do not miss of the week. The Comte Ore with Diana Damrau, Joyce Titanato, Juan Diego Flores. Diana Dummer. I feel like that's a misprint, but I'm not. I thought it was Kate Lindsay, but maybe I saw a different version. I don't know. But anyway, it's hilarious. Okay, if you're having like all week long, if you're have like things are getting you down, like I say, one bad newscast and your mood can just like go down. So save the Comte Ore for a bright spot because it's hilarious. It'll just it's like a total escape. Uh. Friday, the viewer's choice. So last week they allowed us all to vote on three operas for the viewer's choice. And they were gonna show it on Fridays. So I see someone asking, do we still have a Carmen bracelet? Posted. Yes, ma'am. I just posted it. Thank you, Andrew's on the ball. Thank you for helping me, dear. Yes, dear, yes, dear. The go viewer's sip, choice. Go sip, dear. I know, my throat's getting dry. And there is no surprise whatsoever <laughs> as to what was picked. No. As soon as we really. saw this on the list, like, oh, this one's going to get picked. So, da -da 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 -da. viewer's choice is Madama Butterfly with Patricia Rassette, Marcello Giordani. This is my first Madama Butterfly seeing that. Magical. Yes. Magical. She went through a whole pack of Kleenex. Yeah, you always need Kleenex at Madama Butterfly. There's just no way around that. So, um, if you haven't seen it, it's worth making some and time And we have for. a scarf for that, too, right? Yes, we'll have the Madama Butterfly scarf next week in the, in the collection. Saturday, Adriana Lecouvreur with Anna Netrebko, Anita, I've been practicing her name, Rash Velishvili, and Peter Baksala. I saw this at the theater. It was very cool. And the um, Adriana Le Couvert bracelet, which is called Poveri Fiori, is hugely popular. So that'll be joining the special collection next week, too. And to finish up next week, De Rosen Cavalier with Rene Fleming, Alina Garancha, Aaron Morley, and Gunter Grossbach. It was a good one. I saw that one at the theater, too. That's her signature 
control. She, right? she, her and uh, the one before, Susan Graham, they both love that role. So I don't, know, so I don't know. I mean, so many roles are Renee Fleming's signature role, the Marshallin, Rosalka. I mean, well, we have the I don't so, know what's silver, her signature role. Silver Rose Bracelet. That's the that. Silver Rose Bracelet. I would say Renee Fleming is more identified with Song to the Moon. So that'll we'll see that next week in the collection as well. All right. So anything else we want to tell them other than Happy Easter and thanks so much for joining us because it's nice to know people are out there and uh, enjoying some opera. And if we can show you some jewelry about it, why not? Right? Because like I said, we do have gift giving situations, even though we're all in seclusion here. Mother's so Day we're happy is, to help you out. Mother's Day is less than a month away in the U.S. Yeah, in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, we already met, it's already passed in the U.K. But uh, right now it's just been fun to watch these operas they're giving us and see what we have that represents them, which is kind of amazing. It, it was kind of amazing that this week they just picked a bunch of our clearance items. So, you, you know, it's just nice to, to give people a chance to see them. And like I said, a, did I say like I said like 2,000 times? <laughs> so. You'll get used to it, dear. When you're a radio <laughs> professional like me. Oh, yeah. I should have let you do it, dear. No, I don't have the knowledge. You can do the talking and I can just do the pointing. The pointing. Okay, Vanna. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, a portion of everything will go to help the Met out during this time. As long as they're providing us with opera, we're going to keep doing the, um, the little once a week show. All right. Everybody have a good holiday, stay safe, stay healthy, and catch some opera, and we'll see you next week for our next sipping show.